our friends and adventurers, Heather here from Heather's Hikes and Adventures. And today I'm inviting you inside Tara to tour both of my no build minivan camper builds. Sound interesting? I hope so. Come on. Well, hello there, friends and adventurers. Heather here from Heather's Hikes and Adventures. As I said outside, welcome to my minivan, Tara. Today I wanted to do something a little different, hopefully a little fun, a little entertaining, and very helpful to you all. As many of you know, although if you're new you might not, so stick around and check out the other content that I have and you'll know as well, but I do have two different floor plans that I use in this no build build, which is a 2017 Dodge Grand Caravan. Probably one of the things that I love the most about having a no build build is the versatility and options that it affords me. I don't have to commit to just one floor plan, one layout, certain equipment with a huge investment. If I find that something isn't working, I can tweak it, I can change it. If I get bored and I just kind of want to change, I can switch things up. So I honestly love having the option of two amazing floor plans. So I figured, why not do a video where I show you both of my floor plans in the same time, at the same time, in the same place, <laughs> so that you can see for yourself, compare and contrast the differences between both, which one might work better for you, things that you might prefer, things that you might not, and maybe it'll help you if you're in the planning phases, or maybe it'll help you if you think you're ready for a change. Whatever your situation is, I hope you'll stick around and check out both of my awesome floor plans in my amazing minivan camper Terra. So if we look at it from the back, um, this is where I keep my fridge, which I'll show you in a minute. And then underneath here, you can see is where I store my clam, which extends beyond under the bed. I have my garage, which I've given you a tour of before. My mallet for the tent stakes. My Lunatech bottle, I just like to hang here and tuck it in. And this is where I keep my dirty laundry and other extra stuff and then my water supply, which clearly needs refilled right now. And then this is where I tuck my mosquito netting and my magic mesh screen doors, along with some extra reusable bags for shopping. And you can see here is my bathroom setup, and you can see what the cot looks like from this angle. This is the um, memory foam that's folded on top of the cot mattress here, just with a fitted sheet over it and my bedding. So I'll go get the fridge so you can see how that part fits on from back here. So aside from tucking my outdoor rug and outdoor chair under here, as you can see the final component to this setup is putting my fridge in and sliding my toolkit in. And that is this setup from the back and how it works for me. As you can see coming into the living space in this setup, this is definitely where the most visible changes are. This is my bathroom in this setup, which I'll go into in a little more detail, although you can see more of it in my tour that I have linked below. I have my seating area, 
and just some rugs. This three door unit, drawer <laughs> unit, is my pantry, closet, entertainment. And I've shown you guys what I keep in here before as well. But this is the same in both setups. And it's just very easy to access. It's actually in the same exact spot as you can see. All of the same items. But as you can see underneath, there is much more underneath storage for sure this way. I don't have everything I keep with me on a trip right now, but this gives you an idea of the space. And I also keep my clothing and all of that kind of stuff under here. And this is just a little setup on this side using the cup holders. As you can see, I've gone into before, I keep my extra pajamas and bedding in that pillow. Smokey and Flora. My lap desk, my bamboo table. And then I have my little C table over here. This is the same on this seat. And this section is the same in both. It's really just the whole layout that's different here. As you can see with this bed setup, which is the Coleman Camp Cot that is 30 inches wide and 80 inches long, you can definitely fit on here at pretty much any length, <laughs> you know, well over six feet and you're good. So um, that is one bonus. You can definitely stretch out, roll over, move around. You're not as constricted. You've got all of the storage underneath. But as you can see, the living space itself is much, much smaller this way and that is open and airy. Bathroom, in this setup, I'm using my large ottoman, which makes a great additional surface and seating. And then this is my toilet, which is the same as in my other setup. The only difference here is that I keep my urinals, my pee bottle, my extra stuff like air freshener and things like that tucked here instead of inside when it's not in use. I keep my shower bag, my collapsible sink sometimes. And then when we move this out of the way, you can see I've got my first aid kit, my shower wipes, my spare cedar shavings for the toilet, and my spare female disposable urinals underneath. So I do like the versatility of having everything contained in here and still being able to have the toilet itself set up at the same time. So that's one definite bonus to this setup. I'll just give you one last quick look around at this layout. And of course the fridge is normally tucked right behind these pillows down in the well between the back hatch and the bed. But I removed that already since I'm getting ready to take everything else out as well. Up front, no matter which layout I'm using, the view is the same. I don't make any changes in the front. So that's always a plus. I keep my day bag here always, any work or notes that I need, my fanny pack, snack bag, water storage. I can fit my Jackery 240 if I need to. I do always keep the window screens on the front windows when I'm at camp with the window rolled down at least a few inches. And then when it's getting dark or if I wanna keep out the sun or heat, I'll go ahead and add the privacy magnetic curtains as well. Since we have a nice shady day at camp here today, I did not need to worry about that. So I do not have the window cover in now, but I will put it in before dark. I'm always sure to have extra screens on hand in case I need them. And also windshield cleaner, because that's important if you're driving and trying to film <laughs> with a dash cam. I like to keep that towel seat cover for either hiding stuff on the seat or Again, keeping the temperature, sun, and heat off. If you look across, you'll see I have a couple of lumbar cushions to make my drive more comfortable. That's my camera sling. Since I'm set up at camp, I have my <clears throat> cleaning wipes readily available. I love these over the seat hooks for my hats and my day bag, which carries my makeup and anything that I might need for day trips when I'm out exploring. I also always make sure to have wet ones and sunscreen handy because Florida, 
and also, you know, germs exist. I do love having these mesh screens now. No matter which layout I use, I will always utilize these if I am at camp and there are bugs or I need that extra layer of privacy or protection or, you know, just want them up because they look nice and cozy. As you can see, I do currently have my WeatherTech back covering on at the moment. And I do not have my bug netting because, knock on wood, the bugs are not too bad at the moment. I don't know how I got that lucky, but I am going to go with it. Now, when I'm using this setup, since I don't have the long bed to store the covers under, I will keep them just tucked right back in here, which actually adds this next extra layer of insulation between the fridge and the outside. Oh, let me not cover the vent there. And I've just got my netting tucked under there because I was using it yesterday. This is my car emergency kit. My garage storage, which you guys have seen on other videos, is under there with some extra towels. I do not have my outdoor stuff stored right now because it is set up at camp. And this is also my outdoor setup, no matter what, when I use it. My Coleman folding camp chair my little aluminum folding table, my outdoor rug, the privacy panels that I did not need this time, and my six foot by six foot clam quick set traveler, which I do have a video on setting up that I just posted recently. I apologize that the lighting is not the best in here, but I wanted to highlight the other main difference of this layout over my other layout. With this layout, you can see I'm utilizing my C-shaped table that goes around my cot normally as a wider surface space. And underneath, now that it's empty, is my power station. I have my Jackery 1000 here. I normally store my Blue Eddy EB70S here, but it is currently, it is currently out there on the picnic table getting ready to cook my dinner. So normally I keep it stored right here where my camera has taken up residence while I go through my photos. Ignore those chips, please. They were part of dinner last night, my taco salad. I like having this additional storage where I have my keyboard currently since I don't need it. My shower bag is tucked back here for now so that I can easily access it. Up here. Oh, hello me. I like to keep my coffee station ready to go, which is my AeroPress handheld frother and a cup. I use a portable DVD player for movies or this for my laptop slash iPad, tablet, whatever you want to call it. And also, no matter which setup I'm using, I will always have a fan clamped there and one clamped here for maximum airflow. I might not always use both, but they are there as an option. The other largest difference to this setup over my other layout is my bathroom. <laughs> as you can see, it is much more condensed. I do have this towel on top. Because if I do need to use the restroom in the middle of the night, I don't always trust Sleepy Heather, so I can put it on the floor underneath me to prevent any accidents, shall we say. Then here we have my actual toilet, if and when I need it as an emergency. I do keep it secured when I am on the go, but it is not right now so that I can pull it out easily if I need to. And then I will keep the cedar shavings, my shower wipes in case I need to take a non-shower shower, and my pee bottle in case I need that. Oops, my headlamp fell. Let's put that right back up there, shall we? Oh, nope, I guess not. Right, we talked and it wants to live here for, for the rest of the video. I do keep my car trash can right here at all times, even when it's not being used as a mini camper. 
because I can access the trash from either up front or in the back this way. And that is actually consistent no matter which setup I am using as well. Now, I do occasionally use my disposable urinal instead of the reusable pee bottle. Although I prefer toilets when available. I also have this that I like to tuck here, which is an old diaper pad from when my kids were little. <laughs> also waterproof in case I really don't trust myself. My collapsible sink I can tuck back here with the paper towels. And I have a first aid kit readily handy in the back. And I also have one tucked up front at all times. So I think you can see after me actually kind of giving you mini tours of both of my setups in the same video. Both have clear advantages and clear disadvantages. Um, none of the disadvantages in either layout is enough to discourage me from using it. Or quite honestly, if I think about it, preferring one over the other. I mean, I really genuinely love both of these no-build builds for my Dodge Grand Caravan. Um, I will say I do tend to end up preferring using this one just simply because it is so much faster and easier to put together and take apart. I'm able to leave my bed, as I've mentioned before, in place. Um, so that really simplifies things. I only have to take out part of it when I need to put the middle row up and use it as my daily driver to transport me and my kids around. So that obviously makes it way easier and way faster to use in between trips and when I'm ready to hit the road again. Wow. Okay. Okay, I'm back with my ambiance lighting again. <laughs> I had a little battery die on me since I was using my little tiny power pack instead of my mini Jackery. So I've got my lighting back. Not that I think it makes a ton of difference in this late afternoon filming that I'm doing currently. But like I was saying, both have clear advantages. They also have disadvantages. Um, the things that I love about one are a trade-off for what I love about the other and sacrifice in each. For instance, having the much bigger, comfier, cozier bed that I can stretch out, roll around in, use my zero degree sleeping bag in when it's cold and I need to be toasty. All of that is only an option really in my other layout. However, I have to sacrifice a lot of living space and also I've noticed in the heat and the hotter temperatures having a big cozy bed is not always the best. I kind of like having the light open airy living space in the summer and warmer months here in Florida because I feel like it doesn't hold in as much heat. You know it's just open and airy <laughs> and I love that I can go in on either side. It doesn't matter where I park. If I want to have a beautiful waterfront view while I'm cooking dinner, but I can only do it from one side, this really keeps my options open. So it is more versatile. That said, if I'm doing longer term traveling, if I am going to be in cold weather, I definitely would pick the other layout because I am much more comfy cozy in the cold that way. It holds in more heat. I do feel since it's less open and airy, that it kind of holds in the warmth better. So, um, you know, I love both of these layouts and I honestly think that they are two great options that are so easy and so accessible for virtually anybody. So I just kind of wanted to put them both in one video so that you could kind of compare and contrast yourself. I do have another video where I talk about the differences and kind of try to weigh out which I might prefer. So I'll link that below in case that's helpful too. But I hope you found today's video informative, entertaining, and helpful. If so, please give me a thumbs up so that the algorithm knows you did too. And as always, I just really want to thank you for watching. I truly appreciate each and every one of you, and I hope to see you again soon. Bye.